guys welcome back to my channel today's topic is qualitative and quantitative analysis i'll show the answers to today's homework and the previous video's homework in my next video starting with today's lesson we'll first do qualitative analysis just um cations and anions you just need to know what color they impart uh, while they're in solution you, you can be asked for example um, you know, you react this with this and then you get a blue colored solution. What could it be? So, for example, copper plus two, the oxidation state gives a blue colored solution. Then you have um, iron plus two, which gives a greenish yellow solution. Um, then you have iron plus three, which gives a rusty reddish brown um, colored solution. Zinc gives you a white solution and um, cobalt can give you a pink solution if it is in plus 2. Anions, they're mainly white in color except for oxide. So when you have copper oxide or, you know, when you burn something, it becomes black. So you need oxygen to burn, right? So copper oxide or calcium oxide, they all become black. Um, so the main anions the halides like uh, um, silver chloride or um, copper chloride or sulfates, carbonates like barium sulfate, barium carbonate, they are mainly all white in color. They all give a white precipitate. Now let's move on to quantitative analysis. First, you need to know that we have a solute which when added into a solvent will give you a solution. So the calculations will be based on these three uh, substances. So like what's the gram of the solute or what's the number of moles of the solute or what's the volume of the solvent or the solution, the molarity, for example. So this is what we're going to speak about. Starting with the molarity, which is quite important. It is the moles of the solute divided by the volume of the solution, but in liters. And molality is also important. It is the same as molarity except that it is not per liter of solution but per mass of solvent which is measured in kilograms. The unit of measure can be more per dm cube or more per liter. For molality it can be more per uh, kilograms. Then we have um, normality. Now, normality is equal to the number of the equivalents per liter of solution. You need to know that normality is to do, it depends on a reaction. It is reaction based and it depends on the number of moles of electrons which are either reduced or oxidized. Normality is number of equivalents per liter of solution. Now, uh, equivalence is, it depends on the formula of the molecule and it depends on the number of moles. Uh, involved in the reaction. For example, if we take HCl in an acid-base reaction, we know that HCl only donates one mole of um, hydrogen ions or one mole of electrons, we can say. So the number of equivalents, equivalence is equal to molecular mass divided by the number of moles of the electrons involved. So the, no the molecular mass, let's say, is 18 divided by the number of moles given is only one. So the answer, the equivalence is 18. For example, to find the equivalence of potassium permanganate, we know that when it is reduced, it is going to give five moles of electrons. So you take the molecular mass, which is 158 divided by five, and you get 31, uh, which is the equivalence. Now you take this equivalence number and then divide it by the volume of solution in liters and that's how you get, you'll get your normality. Another way to find the normality is um, the grams of the solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters times the equivalence. Or you can use this uh, formula which is very very common when you're doing titration. It is N1, V1 which is normality and volume of the first uh, solution or you can say the analyte is equal to N2 V2 of the titrant. Now I'll tell you a little bit about titration, a little bit about the procedure and the equipment that we use. Okay, the procedure is uh, you have a beaker which contains the analyte or the acid solution, let's say in this picture, 
and this is transferred using a pipette. So a pipette is used to transfer the analyte. Then you have a burette. In the burette, you have the titrant, which is uh, the volume of a solution that you need to find. So you, you will use the burette. You will have to measure the initial volume. Then after finding out uh, how much of the volume you have used, you're going to find the final volume and subtract them to get the volume of titrant used. It is important to know that the titrant is added to the analyte. Um, so there are two terms that you need to know. One is endpoint of the titration and one is equivalence point of the titration. The difference is that endpoint of the titration is when the indicator is added and there is a change in color showing that the reaction is complete. But equivalence point is the point where the reaction is actually complete with regards to the number of moles of the molecules involved. The equivalence point occurs before the end point, which is why we can say it is more accurate. Now, this is a graph of a strong acid and a strong base. You can see the equivalence point is like a straight line. This is a strong acid and a weak base. Then you have a weak acid with a strong base. They all have equivalence points, but the graph of a weak acid and a weak base does not have an equivalence point. Now we'll move on to the last part of this video, which is about indicators. Now, you use indicators to show when um, a reaction occurs or when an acidic uh, solution becomes basic or neutral. So the two main ones that you can be asked is litmus paper and phenolphthalein. So they change colors in acidic and basic medium. So in acidic medium, litmus paper goes red, in basic it goes blue, phenolphthalein in acidic it goes colorless and in basic it goes pink. There are others as well, uh, but these two are the main ones. In the exam, they can also give you a range. So indicators have a range uh, through which they can show their change their colors. So they might give you a range and ask you which one uh, indicator can be used here. So if the range is between 8 to 10, you have to say phenolphthalein. Now we'll move on to the homework. So question one is a calculation. 0.38 grams of sodium nitrate is used, which is equal to 4.47 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles. Now, the volume of the solution is 50 milliliters. So, please find the molarity of sodium nitrate used. The second question is, what is the color of the solution of copper sulfate? And the last question will be 10 milliliter sample of hydrochloric acid solution is titrated with 0.102 normality solution of sodium hydroxide. So the equivalence point is reached after 9.32 milliliters of the solution. Find the normality of the HCl solution. That would be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye. Now.